Chapter 72 Bright, open air, the wind roaring in her ears, then Aelin landed on the open glass bridge a level below, her knees popping as she absorbed the impact and rolled. Her body shrieked in agony at the slices in her arms and back where bits of glass stuck clean through her suit, but she was already sprinting for the tower door at the other end of the bridge. She looked in time to see Dorian hurtle right through the space she'd cleared, his eyes fixed on her. Aelin flung the door open as the boom of Dorian hitting the bridge sounded. She slammed the door behind her, but even that couldn't seal out the growing cold. Just a little farther. Aelin raced up the spiraling tower stairs, half sobbing through her gritted teeth. Rowan, Adian, Kale, Kale. The door shattered off its hinges at the base of the spire and cold exploded through, stealing her breath. But Aelin had reached the top of the tower. Beyond it, another glass footbridge, thin and bare, stretched far across to one of the other spires. It was still shaded as the sun crept across the other side of the building, the uppermost turrets of the glass castle surrounding and smothering her like a cage of darkness. Aelin had gotten out and taken Dorian with her. Kale had bought her that time in one final attempt to save his friend and his king. When she had burst into his house this morning, sobbing and laughing, she'd explain what the wing leader had written, the payment the witch had given in exchange for saving her life. Dorian was still in there, still fighting. She had planned to take them both on at once, the king and the prince, and he had agreed to help her, to try to talk to Dorian back to humanity, to try to convince the prince to fight. Until that moment, he'd seen his men hanging from the gates. Now he had no interest in talking. If Aelin were to stand a chance, any chance, of freeing Dorian from that collar, she needed the king out of the picture, even if it cost her the vengeance for her family and kingdom. Kale was glad to settle that score on her behalf, and on the behalf of many more. The king looked at Kale's sword, then at his face, and laughed. You'll kill me, captain? Such dramatics. They'd gotten away. Aelin had gotten Dorian out, her bluff so flawless even Kale had believed the eye in her hands was the real thing. With the way she'd angled it into the sun so the blue stone glowed, he had no idea where she'd put the real one, if she was even wearing it. All of it. All that they had done and lost and fought for. All of it for this moment. The king kept approaching, and Kale held his sword before him, not yielding one step. For Ress, for Brulo, for Sorsha, for Dorian, for Aelin, for Adian and their family, for the thousands massacred in those labor camps, and for Nezrin, who he'd lied to, who would wait for a return that would never come, for time they wouldn't have together. He had no regrets but that one. A wave of black slammed into him, and Kael staggered back a step, the marks of protection tingling on his skin. You lost, Kael panted. The blood was flaking away beneath his clothes, itching. Another wave of black, identical to the one that had struck Dorian, which Dorian had been able to stand against. Kael felt it that time, the throb of unending agony, the whisper of pain to come. The king approached. Kael lifted his sword higher. Your wards are failing, boy. Kael smiled, tasting blood in his mouth. Good thing steel lasts longer. The sun through the windows warmed Kael's back, as if in an embrace, as if in comfort, as if it to tell him it was time. I'll make it count, Aelin had promised him. He had bought her time. A wave of black reared up behind the king, sucking the light out of the room. Kael spread his arms wide as the darkness hit him, shattered him, obliterated him until there was nothing but light, burning blue light, warm and welcoming. Aelin and Dorian had gotten away. It was enough. When the pain came, he was not afraid. Chapter 73 It was going to kill her. He wanted it to. Her face. That face. He neared the woman step by step across the narrow, shaded bridge, the turrets high above them gleaming with blinding light. Blood covered her arms, and she panted as she backed away from him, her hands out before her, a gold ring shining on her finger. He could smell her now, the immortal, mighty blood in her veins. Dorian, she said. He did not know that name, and he was going to kill her.